In our practice, the teaching is very extensive. Um, the cancer center that I work in, it's our requirement that all patients attend a chemotherapy education class. So that's our beginning point, if you will. Once we've gone through a treatment plan and gone through a treatment consent, the chemotherapy education class is required. Again, um, in our practice setting, we encourage both patients and families to attend that. We really um, are hesitant when we see patients who come in by themselves because the concern is, is that if something goes wrong with them at home, they don't have another caregiver or a family member that's making that observation. Um, there certainly are pay people that don't have a caregiver who lives with them or you know, a friend or a neighbor that they can rely on. And we always encourage them to think about what's your backup plan? You know, is there somebody that can bring you to the hospital if you're feeling unwell? Is there someone that is able to run out to the store for you and pick up medications? or things that you need to eat or drink if you're having side effects such as nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. The patient um, and family teaching materials that have recently been updated, again, because we are aware of these toxicities related to 5 of you and Cape Cytobine, is basically you know, updated information. Patients may look at a package insert, they may look at the printed materials that we give them when they're um, gone through a treatment consent form process, but that doesn't really adequately highlight what are the red flags for people? We give them um, patient teaching materials. There is a one-sheet tear-off that very nicely outlines to them, you know, what are the things that are alerts? What are the things that you should not just be dealing with or thinking that you can symptomatically manage or tough it out? What are the things that you absolutely have to make that call to the provider for? You know, do not, do not pass go. Do not wait until the next clinic appointment. You know, these are the things that your providers need to hear from you as soon as possible if you're experiencing. I think it's critically important for patients and families to understand that there is a normal that we could expect after chemotherapy and there's what's not normal. We tell all patients that the most comic side effect, common side effect of chemotherapy is fatigue. So if you tell a patient you may be more tired, you may have to come home from work and take a nap, that's normal within the spectrum of chemotherapy side effects. If you have a patient who is calling you or a family member is calling you and saying they can't get out of bed. That's not normal with 5-FU or Cape Cytobine. If you hear from a patient that they you know, got up to go to the bathroom, they felt so ill that they kind of just fell asleep on the floor. Um, that happened with a patient that we saw last week and ended up in the emergency room and ended up on Vistagard, that you know, those are things that are, that are outside of the realm. Um, all of our patients are given anti-nausea medicines to have at home. We tell them if the anti-nausea medicines are not helping them, we need to hear from them. If we have patients who are experiencing diarrhea, again, we tell them any more than four diarrhea stools, we need to talk about it. You can certainly go and get over-the-counter medications such as loperamide. We'd like them to have that on hand, but we want to have the conversation. We don't want to get the phone call where a patient's been saying, I've been taking the loperamide that you asked me to take, but I still had 12 diarrhea stools yesterday, and now I'm so tired and weak that I don't know if I can get into the office. We have to emphasize to people that we really want them to call if anything is not normal for them. And even if it ends up being within the realm of expected toxicity, we can't know that and quantify that with them unless they're calling us and telling us if something's not right for them. When a patient calls and is calling in with adverse events from treatment, the first part of the conversation is what's going on. So not just saying, I feel sick. You know, how do you feel sick? Have you taken your supportive medications? Are you eating and drinking? Um, you know, are you having abnormal amounts of nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea? Are you having mouth sores? You know, what's your functional status? Are you able to, you know, get up and out of bed and take care of yourself or go to work if somebody who's working? Uh, what, are, what are the impacts? It's not just a matter of somebody calling and saying, I feel nauseous. Okay, take your prescription that we gave you and then call me tomorrow. It's, it's getting those details out of the patient. Um, if you ask them if they're eating and drinking and they say yes, it's not just a matter of what are you eating and drinking, how much are you eating and drinking, what are you able to tolerate. If a patient you know, calls and says, yes, I'm drinking, and then you say, well, how much? Well, I've had a half a bottle of water in the last 24 hours. That's abnormal. Um, it's, it's a matter of not just taking one word or one sentence answers from people. It's making that complete assessment when someone calls in over the phone. Um, if we were able to just have rote responses, then 
you know, we would have recordings that would tell people what they're supposed to be calling us for, but that's not it. And every patient and their experience is going to be very individual, and you have to take into account what are the other factors that affect that patient. Um, do they live 20 minutes away from your office, or are they two hours away? Are they able to drive themselves in, or do they have to rely on a family member or, do, or public transportation? So there are all those factors that are really going to be important in how you assess what's going on with your patient. Um, in terms of an individual case, we had a patient that is really an atypical presentation of 5 fu toxicity. It's a patient in her early 60s. She had a comorbidity of diabetes. We've taken care of her for her colorectal cancer for about four years. She's very well known to our practice, very reliable patient. We started her on full Fox chemotherapy on a Monday. She had not previously had that drug um, combination in her treatment because she had a pre-existing diabetic neuropathy. So she got treated on a Monday. She left our infusion center probably early in the afternoon. She called me Tuesday morning early. Voicemail message was left before 7 o'clock in the morning. And she called and said, I need to speak with you. Something is very wrong. I called her back probably about a half an hour or so after she left the message. I said, please tell me what's wrong. And she said, something is very wrong. She said, I started having nausea and vomiting and diarrhea um, very shortly after I left the office. She says, I'm shaking all over. She says, I'm just not right. And I said, just come on in. And she lives close by. So she was in an exam room probably within an hour of when we had the conversation. So again, she had just gotten her treatment the day before. Um, and we shut her 5-FU pump off. When she arrived at the office, we checked to make sure that the pump had been infused incorrectly. It didn't appear that there was any pump malfunction. But she had a tremor in her right arm. Looked like somebody had Parkinson's disease. It was very pronounced. Uh, she's very well known to us, but um, her mental status was abnormal. She was confused. She again had reported nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea that had been severe since she left the office, unresponsive to supportive medications. She already had mucositis, um, and those are all very, very atypical things. And so we again stopped her 5-FU infusion. We sent her over to our infusion center, got some labs drawn on her, gave her some IV fluids, and started Vistagard.